Hi, I'm Jack Cowley, Vice President of Chaos for Orion, one of the Orion OGs, or Orion Old Guys. So I'm currently holding what the new board is going to look like, the one that's going to be done right here in Phoenix, where it used to be done. This particular board is the NT100 and 200. The only difference, as I told you, high current or high voltage. This one here is wired up to be an NT200. All of the electrical connections that we did in 1994 are exactly the same today. There's a reason why we did that. The folks who always loved Orion, such as myself, one of the reasons we loved it, and you can ask other Orion enthusiasts this, the old school amplifiers had a warm base, a deep base but very warm, very clean and very smooth. But at the same time, your high end was crisp and snappy. The amplifier truly accomplished both. Whereas back in the early 90s and 80s, if you got a bass amp, it did okay on bass, and if you got a highs amp, it was good on highs. But Orion truly had the market cornered in that category, and I'll explain why we know this. Probably every single crank it up I ever went to, you would see somebody with Orion on their bass, and they would also run Orion on their high end. Other vehicles I competed against, won't say any brands, but you would see their big amplifiers on the base and a completely different brand in, uh, for the high end in their car. I'll give you an easy example. Someone might have a top brand on their base and have like say another brand just known for high end on their highs, but it was never the same brand. Orion vehicles always had all Orion. That should tell you something. Back to this amplifier. As I mentioned, we kept all the circuit connections the same. The schematic is identical. Again, we didn't want to change anything, but there was a couple of things we just had to, to modernize it. We put your normal terminal blocks on the back of the amp. The older Orion products used to use Molexes, and for those days and time, that was great. But now you got to modernize, you got to bring it up to date. So we added one inch to the back of the board, and that's all we did and we put nice terminal blocks. You come around to the front, which is another small change. We got rid of the old DIN connector with the phantom power built in, 15 volt negative and positive that used to travel up the DIN cables to power the other Orion products. No one has any of that anymore. Um, and if they do, they generally have their vintage collection. Um, since this is a NT amplifier, but brought to you know modern times, we changed up the front a little bit. Standard RCA inputs, we still left the balanced inputs. Pots the same, mono buttons the same. But again, we added one inch to the front of the board to give us the space we needed for the, for the larger components. So the entire board used to be 20 inches, but the new amp is 22 inches. But again, the entire design is the same. Here's some enhancements we did, but again, keeping the design the same. The original amplifiers in 1994 used a different output. These particular ones from OnSemi are a product called ThermalTrack. And the white papers on this, I hope I'm saying it right, were written up by the designer of the amplifier, which is Mark. He initially intended to use these ThermalTrack outputs on this amplifier, but job differences and whatnot, the amplifier was left the way it was and it never got the upgrade. So we took the original 1994 design, we added the normal terminals that people would expect on an amplifier today, we changed the outputs out for the new thermal track, which includes the diodes built in, which also helps eliminate completely the thermal runaway that a few amps had way back in the day. And another thing I'd like to mention to you is that it's a, hundred, it's a 0.100 mil board, much thicker than the old ones. The copper we're using is three ounce copper instead of two ounce, and we're doing that on both layers. Something else I'd like to point out is all of our boards are gold immersed. So it adds that nice little gold plating to it. Why? It actually helps the boards last a little longer over a period of years. Now, Keep in mind, the original Orion NT amplifiers, like much of the Orion product from the 80s and 90s, are still in use today. So, 
We took the design, we literally duplicated it, enhanced it just a tad, didn't change the circuit, and we're gonna bring this bad baby back. Because it's sad, actually, that many people today in the audio world have no clue how this can sound. In fact, I challenge you, go online, Google NT amplifiers. You're gonna hear nothing but the best results. You're also gonna see people still selling them for more than they sold retail 30 years ago. What does that tell you? It tells you it was one of the best amplifiers ever made. And in my mind, it was the best amplifier ever made. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about why the circuitry in this amplifier does what it does. I wanna also mention one thing which you can obviously see on this board. You'll notice everything is whole through components. Definitely much more of a task to do these because we still assemble by hand. That's what we'll be doing in Arizona. So it's pretty labor intense. There's a lot of parts in here. You can see it's full. A lot of amplifiers you might see out there. A lot of voids on the board. These things were, from day one, they were overbuilt. From day one. And that's probably why they still sound so clean today. The main reason we wanted to use the whole through technology, and there'll be people who will say mm, this or that, but fact is, you've got some flexibility, you know? I know you can do that with most boards, but when you play around with surface mount parts, you have a much greater chance of a flex from heat and then cold and then hot to snap a surface mount part than you will ever do with a hole through. Your hole through is naturally gonna have some, uh, you know, a little play in it because you've got leads going in a hole. We know these amplifiers can last 30 years. Why would we change that? It makes no sense. So we even kept hole through components all the way. Every single thing, hand placed, hand built. Another thing I wanna talk to you guys about is where everything comes from. We say things like, we're gonna build it in the US. You hear that all the time. And we're saying, we're gonna build it in Phoenix. I don't know if you hear that often, but we're gonna build it in Phoenix. Now, what's exciting more than just building it in America is it's so cool to go back to some of the suppliers you used to use locally and see them still in business. Many are not, but a few are. I'll give you an example. Um, back in the day, we used to gold dip amplifiers, 24 karat gold. There's a company called Gold Tech. They're still in business in Arizona. So we may actually do some one-off gold amplifiers for you guys. So another exciting company I'll talk about is the PCB manufacturer. Yeah, they're, they're literally still here in Phoenix. It blew my mind. Now we use different suppliers from sometimes and it wasn't always in Phoenix, not a big deal, but it's really cool to see some of these old school places still doing the work. Anodizing, I believe that place was what, uh, Mesa Anodizing or Southern Anodizing here in Phoenix. They're still killing it. They're still doing good anodizing just like they were doing 30 and 40 years ago. So. We started using the same companies that we did back in the day. PCB board, literally came from down the street. The toroids, right? The transformers. These are actually hand wound here in Phoenix. These are not coming overseas. Yeah, tedious, a lot of work, a lot of screaming, a lot of crying, <laughs> but we get it done. Something else that I'm actually excited about is we're actually, I don't have it in my hands right now. Um, but we're actually getting the aluminum, the mold, done by Hydro in Arizona. So yes, even the heat sink itself, which you know is very costly to do in, in the U.S., we're doing that here in Phoenix too. Everything is being done here in Phoenix. Thank you for being a part of the Orion family. Contact us today at family at orioncaraudio.com with any questions.